Well, hello there, friends. Another fantastic potato recipe today. Potato souffle. The beauty about this, you can make it in advance and reheat them when you, whenever you're ready to heat. I'm gonna share with you the secret how to make them perfect, nice and fluffy. All kind of goodies inside there. I know you're gonna love it. And it's so simple to make. A child can do it. Not really, I'm, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Friends, I'm glad you're here. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're doing it together right now. Okay, friends. Well, another potato, easy one. This is the one you can make in advance. If you have a dinner party, it's fabulous. I love it. I love making it with sweet potato, regular potato, any kind of potato. It's delicious. Friends, we're gonna saute the, um, the, the, the ingredient that we're gonna put in there. We got bacon. <laughs> Remember, uh, the onion always number first, unless, unless there's bacon. <laughs> I got bacon right here. So I'm gonna get the pan hot. I'm gonna saute the bacon a little bit. And the reason why we put it number one the bacon is because we want to release the fat, then we're going to use to saute the onion, okay? So I got uh, uh, about uh, uh, three ounces of, uh, I'm not measuring that much, about three ounces or two, three ounces of bacon, and, uh, and I got one large onion, and I got about two ounces, about approximately, so it's about a pound and a half. I probably have a little too much of those potatoes because I'm only going to make six souffles, um, but I always make extra because I love it. I can make a quick little omelet with this. It's delicious. I, I love having extra potatoes. You know, somebody left a really interesting comment in the uh, in a in a in the comment thing. It says, you know, I used to measure everything so carefully. Everything had to be the perfect ounces, the perfect this, perfect this, perfect this. And then I realized that this guy talking about me <laughs> doesn't measure a damn thing. And I started doing it, and all of a sudden my food turned out just as good. So now I'm relaxing, I'm drinking wine, enjoy, good for you, good for you. This is what it's all about, you know, don't be too like crazy, oh, I gotta have exactly one ounce. No, you don't, you know. When you're baking, it's a different story, okay? When you're baking, you know, it's chemistry. Cooking is not chemistry. If you put a, a, a two ounces of bacon or three ounces of bacon, do you think it's gonna make a difference? Absolutely not. Relax, it's only cooking. You know, not like uh, we're sending a man on the moon, I always say that is so true. You know, because we're not sending a man on the moon. We're just cooking. Worst case scenario, not coming out so great. <laughs> so, with all the Chinese. <laughs> oh, whatever. So look, I got a little fat from the, um, from the bacon over here. Plus, I got to get going. So I can't be here all day. Uh, I got to wait another second. I got, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the cup we're going to be using, okay? They're five ounce uh, souffle cup. Use any cup you got. I'm going to show you later on what I do to them, okay? And I don't know why I was going to, all of a sudden I started talking about that. Oh, yeah, I know why. Because <laughs> I'm going to put one and a half ounces approximately of cream per uh, containers. All right? So I measure roughly about nine, ten ounces of cream. And then in there, I'm going to put some cheese. So I got about four ounces of, uh, of cheddar. I use a beautiful English cheddar. The English make fabulous cheddar. Got to give them. English, you know, years ago, you, people used to pick on the English food. Let me tell you. I have some friends of mine that work in, uh, in uh, English in, in London and all that. They're fabulous chefs. The English have uh, stepped it up a lot, let me tell you. So, I got the cheese here, uh, cheddar, and I'm also going to add a little bit of brie, because I love brie. Do you like brie? If you don't like it, then don't put it in. Put a little more cheese, put Gruyere cheese, put Swiss cheese, put whatever cheese you want. It's your thing. I'm gonna put a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano that I grated yesterday. Just a little bit, okay? See that? This you have to really be careful how you measure. <laughs> We're gonna melt all those cheeses in the cream. We got the onion going. All right, we're gonna get the onion a little more color. And the potatoes, I cut them in little dice. I mean, they're not really, really little. Um, you can use any potato you want for this. The baking potatoes, you can use the uh, hot potatoes, you can use the uh, 
a russet potato, you can use a Yukon gold potato, any potato that makes you happy. It really doesn't matter. It's really up to you. I don't care what it is. It's going to work. Um, let me put a little bit of, uh, of garlic in, in here, in the, in, uh, in the cream, right? Just a little bit of garlic. I got about a water. What do you say? Two teaspoons? If we were to measure, two teaspoons. We're not measuring, but if we were to, all right? So we got the cream going on. We're looking very good. We're going to melt all that cheese. The potatoes are looking good. The onion are looking good. We're going to put a little bit of nutmeg if you have it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Like a nothing. Doop, doop, doop. See, nothing and nutmeg. Fresh nutmeg. Like, if you have. And later on, we're going to put some spinach. We're going to wait a little bit for the spinach. And the potatoes, we're going to wait another second for the potatoes. Let me show you what I'm going to do with the mold, okay, friends? So what you want to do with your souffle cup, friends, you want to put some cheese on the inside of it. The best way to do that, you put some butter in there. Or non-stick play if you wanted to, if you have to. You take a little bit of the Parmigiano Reggiano or, or Pecorino Romano, whatever makes you happy, and then you roll it. Can you get a idea, Doc? Is that good right there? You got a good angle for that? See what I'm doing, friends? I'm, I'm getting rid of the excess right there, and it's sticking to the side, because I got the butter in there. Or you can put non-stick spray. And the excess, just get rid of it, put it in here, okay? See, they're all ready to go. So the, the secret is, the secret, there's no secret. The, the method is, now well, we're gonna put the potatoes. You know, this is really, Simple recipe, you notice? Know I'm telling you, we're gonna put some pepper in there, friends. Not this one. And we're also gonna put some salt. Salt. Somebody was telling me, telling me the other day in one of the comments that I put too much salt. He was on the other test. How does he know? He said, it looked like you put too much salt. <laughs> Dude, you were not here to test it. How would you know? <laughs> I don't put too much salt. I put what I need. Yeah, just put what I need. Sometimes it takes me a little while. So look, guys, I'm going to reduce the heat. I don't want it to be too high. And now I'm going to put a top on it. When the potatoes are almost soft and tender, I'm going to put my spinach. This was about two, three ounces of spinach leaves that I cut up small. This is it, friends. I told you it was going to be simple. We're going to melt all this. It's going to be beautifully melted. The potatoes are going to cook. When they cook, we're going to put the potato in there. We're going to take the cheese custard. We're going to put it in the egg. How many eggs? One egg per. Making six, six eggs. Eight, eight eggs. So, very scientific, you know this? And this is it, friends. This is it. This is all it is. And I promise you, this is delicious. Learn to put anything you want in there. You know, you can put uh, mushrooms in there. You can put corn in there, sweet potatoes in there. You can have a lot of fun with it. And like I said, the cool part of it, you can make them in advance and then reheat them in a warm oven or believe it or not, don't tell anybody, microwave. One minute and they're like brand new. I got to tell you, years ago, we used to make them at the restaurant on the menu. On the menu at the restaurant, we used to make them. And, uh, and you know, and I would come in at my restaurant the next day at seven o'clock in the morning to open up. And I was always hungry. And I would go in and open up the fridge, and I liked this so much because we used to have it on the menu. And I would eat them cold, and I'm like, man, I just don't like them cold. You know, they're just not so good cold. So one day I said, hey, there's nobody watching. I'm gonna put them in the microwave for like uh, 45 seconds. Oh, what a revelation! It was like Brian. It was, I'm telling you, it was like I just took them out of the oven the day before. So don't be afraid. Don't tell anybody. Just say, look, look what I just baked. <laughs> All right, friends. I come back in a minute when this is cooked, when the, the cheese is all melted and we're ready to go. I see you in a minute. Okay, all right friends, so now I added a little bit of spinach. They were just chopped up. You just keep the spinach, or you can add mushroom. We're gonna break the egg, friends, and then we're gonna put a little hot sauce. You don't have to put the hot sauce. I just got like a little bit of a little spice to it. And uh, and then we're going to finish the cheese mixture, mixture, mixture. You see? 
And uh, we're going to do what is called tempering the egg, which means we'll, uh, we'll introduce the heat slowly. Got a little spinach on them from my spatula. And we're going to introduce the heat slowly so we don't have scramble eggs. I want them to cook, but not here, not in the bowl. I want them to cook inside. So this is just to introduce the heat slowly. There you go. Let's turn this off. So I don't have to worry about it. The potatoes are 90% down, 80, 90% down. It's the same principle, friend, if I were to make a frittata. I'll do the same deal also. If you have never seen my frittata recipe, check it out, friends. It's fantastic. It's the best way to make a frittata. Even cook from the, the whole thing, super cook. A lot of people put the frittata the egg in a hot fry pan. That's a big mistake. If you want an even cooked frittata, you, uh, you put the egg in a cold fry pan. If you've never checked that recipe, you should check it out. It's fantastic, if I have to say so myself. So look, friends, this smells amazing. You know, can you also, you can add goat cheese. Oh, yeah. If you like goat cheese. Oh, it's going to be more than enough cream. Sometimes I'm always afraid. Oh, I'm not going to have enough of this. I'm not going to have enough of this. <laughs> and I always have too much. You'll see, I don't have too much of this. All right, friends, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the fry pan on here, and I'm going to fill them up. Boom, right there. You see? And I'm going to cover them all up. Now, you see? Cover the whole thing. Let me tell you, friends, this is delicious. And don't worry about it. They hear my uh, my spoon in the non-stick fry pan. Everybody, oh, mama mia, he's using a metal tool. Let me tell you, I've had this fry pan for 15 years. I've used the uh, the metal in it 15 years. Nothing happened to it. There's not a scratch in this fry pan. Some non-stick cookware, you can't do that. But this one, I have no issue with it. See, I'm going to have extra potatoes. It's okay, because this is a bit delicious. Tonight, with a little uh, uh, easy uh, steak recipe, a little chicken recipe right next to it, be fantastic. So simple to make. See, I always make extra. See, right here, be fantastic. Fill it up. Don't be afraid to fill it up. Well, I mean, you gotta give a room for the custard. And if you have too much custard, like I'm gonna have right here, what can you do with it? Make extra. <laughs> Make extra uh, uh, souffles. Why not? We're going to fill it up now, friends. Let's take the bowl and put it right there. You see? You see? Beautiful. And now, friends, we're going to fill them up. You see? Did I tell you I got the oven at 350, 375? Depends how hot your oven is. 350 is good if you have a good oven. If your oven is a little weak, then you may want to push it to 365, 375. Again, that's like uh, not rocket science. Eh? Oh, mama me, it's got to be perfect. No, it doesn't. It's still going to cook, I promise you. You see, fill them up. I didn't do anything you guys cannot do. So you can do extra now, because you got extra, right? Grab yourself another two containers. You got enough to make another two or two, three, easy. <laughs> hey, you know, about I have extra is not enough, right? I bet you're with me too. This is it, my friends. We're gonna go in the oven. Up, up in the oven. Make sure you, your dishes are clean. And uh, I'm gonna take them out. And then I gotta let them rest. I can't take them out and, uh, and take them out right away out of the mold. I gotta let them rest. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a fork. I'm gonna plunge those guys right there. All right? Just gotta make sure everything is submerged. All right? Make sure you go all the way to the top, eh, friends? And don't mix them. Don't go out there, look at the mix it over there now. Because if you, <laughs> if you go, you're gonna disturb 
the cheese that you put inside. So no disturbance, please. All right, friends? I'm gonna, by the time I see you, they would have cooked, I would have taken them out of the oven, and I would have let them rest a little bit. Okay, and then we take them out, I'll show you what they look on the inside. They're fabulous. i see you in a few minutes, friends. Okay, friends, I made two extra because I had the, uh, enough stuff. To see, when you first take them out, friends, they're going to rise a little bit like this. They're going to go three-quarter of an inch, an inch. But this is not the kind of souffle you want to eat right away. You want to let them rest. You see, look, I took those a minute ago because I put those two or three minutes before. They came out, they were ready two or three minutes before. The minute you take them out, you watch this guy right there, right in front of you, it's going to fall. And that's what we want. We want them to fall because there's no way. First of all, we don't eat it this way. This is not a souffle you eat right away. It's not like a Romani souffle or a chocolate souffle or a cheese souffle Then you take out right away. This made, is made with a meringue and all that. It's a whole different process. Those guys, you make them in advance. That's the beauty about it. You see, so now what we're going to do, we're going to let them cool so I can hold them because right now I can't hold them. They, they're too hot. My hands are pretty good with the heat, but they're not that good. So we're going to let them rest. And then we're going to take them out of there. I'm going to show you how you take them out. It's really cool. And then uh, yeah, to reheat them, you just put them on a cookie sheet and you put them in a warm oven or in a microwave. Don't tell anybody. All right. So um, we're going to let them rest. See, look at this guy. I've been talking one minute, then poop, it goes, that's what happened. And that's what we want. Okay. And you'll see, they're going to come right out. They're really easy to come out because we spread it correctly with the butter and the cheese. So I see you when they cool so I can hold them in my hand. Okay. See you in a minute. All right, friends, well, when they are cool enough and you can handle them if you want to eat them right away, you still should have mold them even if you don't want to eat them right away. And um, so here's what I recommend, friends. If you did a really good job putting the, uh, the, the butter and the Parmesan cheese, uh, you shouldn't have to do that, but you may want to just take a knife really quick and making sure the top is all loosened. You shouldn't have to do that, but just in case, Rather be safe than sorry. And if you do that, just make sure when you are inside with your knife, your knife is always tilted against here. Otherwise, you'll cut into the souffle, okay? And they won't look as pretty. So when, they, when they're cool enough, then you can handle them um, uh, with your hand. You got to take them and you got to shake them, give them a little shake. Not too much, otherwise you're going to hurt them. Remember, they're fragile. And voila. See, they should be as pretty in the bottom as they are on the top. And this, my friends, is a fabulous, let me wash my hand. This, my friend, is a, is a fabulous way to make a little potato souffle, potato side dish, whatever it is. And you fill it with whatever you want. That's the beauty. You, uh, uh, you fill it with anything you want in here. I just did it with the, with the potato and the, and the spinach. But anything you want in there, friends, is, is, is good, good to go. And the, and the measurements are about the same. I just want to cut it so you can see the inside of it, friends. You see, it's going to be as pretty as whatever you put inside. So you put some sweet potato in there, and it's going to give it a little color in there. You put some bell peppers in there, and it's going to give it some other color. It's really up to you. And you see, you got a beautiful custard in here, and it's gorgeous. And, uh, and, and like I said, the, the beauty is make them in advance, keep them in the fridge, and you have a dinner party, you pop them in a the microwave. Don't... I'm telling you, it, not long though. I, I say 30 seconds, uh, 45 seconds at the most. And, uh, and they are delicious. They're light as a feather. <laughs> That's going to be too much. All right, we try. Oh, mm. oh let me tell you. Mm. Every time I make this, mm, I forgot the good there. You can taste the bacon, you can taste everything. Mm. More fun cheese you put in there, and more fun you're gonna have to eat them. My friends, I hope you make them. I'm, I'm really, I'm happy I shared this recipe with you because it's really special. I hope you make it, and I'm glad you were here to learn how to make it. Thumbs up if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and friends, don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching. Wow, those are gonna be delicious here. Have you ever had this one, Jack? Did I ever make that for you? Oh, yeah, I made them for Thanksgiving, no? Mmm. Let me tell you. They're delicious. I could eat the whole thing. And I will eat the whole thing. Mmm.
All right, let's enroll those. We got them ready for dinner. <laughs>